Hey guys, welcome to the Animation Movies Recapped. This is David with you. In today's video, I will be going through a 2017 Spanish 3D computer animated adventure comedy film called Tad the Lost Explorer and the Secret of King Midas. It is the sequel to the previous film called Tad the Lost Explorer. It even has a third part which will be coming up next. So without any further ado, let's start with the recap. We are ushered into the animation with a climactic prologue, showing a boat and its crew caught in a storm at sea while waiting for an archaeologist named Sarah, deep down the sea searching for an ancient relic. After discovering the artifact and gaining possession of it, the explorer swims towards the boat, with some difficulty due to disturbance in the water. Arriving at the boat, she expresses her excitement over the successful discovery of the ancient artifact, but was ignorant of the fact that she was being watched by a stranger across the sea. The movie officially begins with Tad sitting beside his dog, reading archaeological books at his place of work, a construction site. His co-workers come along and mock him over his choice of books and question why he always indulges himself with such boring books. Going through some of the books Tad is reading, they come across one with a picture of a beautiful woman on the cover and joke with him about her. He tells them that her name is Sarah, that he has feelings for her, and they are friends, his colleagues don't believe him anyway. During this discussion, he receives a call from this exact friend, Sarah, a renowned archaeologist. She had made the headlines with her latest discovery and was hosting an exhibition to present her artifact, so called Tad to talk about it. Tad had received an invitation to the exhibition, so she gives him the direction to the venue of the exhibition in Las Vegas. Tad expresses his happiness to be able to see her soon, and he glances at the jewelry box that contains the necklace he intends to gift her. While on the phone, something hits the box off his hand, and he struggles to get it back, thereby dividing his attention from the call. He finally gets a hold of it, but not without causing a mess at his workplace. At his house, as Tad packs his luggage in preparation for his journey, he hears a knock on his door. As he opens it, he can't figure out who was in front of him, the person at his door has a shadow cast on his face. Gradually the face of the visitor is fully revealed and Tad cannot believe his eyes, it is a mummy. He and the visitor scream at each other in bewilderment, his neighbor also sees the mummy and faints. The mummy runs into Tap's apartment exclaiming that he is thirsty and heads to the toilet and drinks toilet water. He explains to Tad that he hasn't drunk water in 20 days. Tad had met this mummy during his last archaeological expedition to the lost city. The mummy is in exile for helping Tad during his adventure amongst other allegations, so he came to Tad for help. Tad informs him that he was about to travel to meet Sarah, and the mummy pleads that Tad takes him along since he was also friends with Sarah. Reluctantly, Tad agrees to allow him to follow him, and together they leave Chicago for Las Vegas. Along the way, Tad reveals that he plans on asking Sarah to be his girlfriend, but the mummy discourages him, telling him that she wasn't on his level. Arriving at their destination, Tad leaves both his dog and the mummy in the car and instructs the mummy to stay in the put car while he heads out. At the entrance of the hotel, Tad is welcomed by Sarah's student, Tiffany, who gives him a warm welcome. She tells Tad of her desire to become a renowned archaeologist like Sarah. It is a charming scene to behold as the two friends reunite with each other and hold themselves in a warm embrace filled with pleasantries. Outside the hotel in the car, the mummy gets a bit distracted by the sound of music. He discovers that it is a guitarist performing along the road. The mummy couldn't help but marvel at the beautiful outfit he has on. It was a jumpsuit adorned with colorful and shiny stones. So, he steps out of the car and walks towards the musician. Scared, the musician flees. Sarah tells Tad that she discovered the exact locations of these collar pieces in real life, and that the myth of King Midas' touch, which turned everything into gold, was indeed true. Sarah begins to apologize to Tad about how absent she has been due to work, but he cuts her off and informs her that he understands perfectly and that she needs not explain. Throughout the rest of their discussion Tad is unable to present his gift or even confess his feelings as he was nervous and also, interrupted by a visitor. The mummy interrupts Tad and Sarah wearing the exact outfit as the musician outside the hotel. He had collected the musician's guitar and clothes. Sarah expresses her surprise at seeing him, but he begins his same speech of how he is in exile, but Tad cuts him off. Tad is given a room at the hotel, and he changes into his outfit for the exhibition. He pleads with the mummy to remain in the room so as not to make the guests and people around upset. The mummy agrees but gives him a condition. The condition was that Tad would take his dog, Jeff, with him. Tad agrees, takes his dog, and heads out. During the exhibition, Tad is surprised at the cold shoulders given to him by the entire guests. He later finds out that they treated him that way because he's dressed as a waiter. He can't believe this discovery because the suit he has on is his best suit. At the hotel garage, a van drives in and stern-looking men, 
dressed in the same outfit, hop out of the back and a chubby-looking woman follows right after them. They happen to be the waiters for the occasion, but they have a sinister air around them. Back at the exhibition, Sarah mounts the podium to begin her presentation. She tells the true story of King Midas's power as revealed by the ancient relic. According to her, King Midas was a great warrior who defeated all his enemies for Apollo. Apollo, in gratitude, bestowed upon him a collar with three golden pieces that gave the warrior the to turn everything he touched into gold. Midas amassed so many gold pieces, but soon, his power became a curse. His daughter reached out to touch him, and she too was turned into gold. Devastated, Midas returned to Apollo and begged for mercy. Apollo asked Midas to get rid of his collar, offering each of the three pieces to a god in different temples around the world. Midas followed Apollo's orders and, by giving up an immense power, brought his daughter back to life. In order words, he made a great sacrifice for love. Everyone is impressed by the new insight and knowledge the presentation provided, and gave Sarah a resounding ovation. Tad, who was in the crowd, was the happiest for her. It was time for Sarah to reveal the Midas papyrus and unknown to her, Rackham, a man who had followed her every move since she discovered the scroll, had an evil plan up his sleeve. He had planned to ambush the exhibition and steal the scroll, and the stern-looking waiters are the evil people that work for him. Sarah unveils the scroll and immediately, Rackham's men attack and cause pandemonium. At the rooftop above where Sarah stands, a helicopter hovers above it and shines its light. Rackham appears and gradually descends through the hole in the roof. He picks up the scroll with a look of triumph on his face, picks Sarah in his arms, and ascends with the rope through the rooftop back to the helicopter. Sarah is abducted, and the scroll is stolen. Tad does everything within his power to save Sarah at this moment but it doesn't work. Rackham has also been in search of King Mita's scroll and the source of Mita's power for selfish reasons, and needs all the knowledge Sarah has to find it. Sarah leaves her book behind, so Tad can use it to find her. A very sad and distraught Tad swings immediately into action to rescue Sarah. Thanks to the mummy, they interpret an ancient language that directs them to the location of the first collar piece, which is the Temple of Baal in Granada, Spain. Tad, Tiffany, the mummy, Tad's dog Jeff and Sarah's parrot all travel to Spain to find the Temple of Baal, where the first piece of Mita's necklace was hidden, and to also find Sarah. Rackham injects Sarah with a truth serum and makes her tell the truth. Sarah confesses to Rackham that her book contains all the knowledge he needs. So he sets out to find the book and Tad. Now in Spain, the mummy changes outfit into something more presentable, and they all hire a vehicle towards Baal's temple. Tad and the search team are soon attacked by Rackham's men, who shoot tranquilizers at them. They find themselves in a hot chase, but with joint effort and experience, they were able to escape. At Ball's temple, Tad and Tiffany try to gain entrance to where the first collar piece was kept. After working through some of the statues, they finally gain entrance. They set eyes on the first piece of Midas's collar, Tad carefully picks it up. As they turn to leave, the trap gets set off and the entire temple was filled with water. Tad and everyone with him is at the verge of drowning. He begins to go under the water to look for a channel for the water to go out. Soon, he discovers one and with the assistance of Tiffany, they get pushed out with the water pressure on the streets. This action draws the attention of Rackham and his men who were around the vicinity. Unfortunately, they hand the piece of Mita's collar which they found to Rackham, as well as the book in exchange for Sarah. Sarah later reveals Rackham's wicked intentions and tells them that they need to find the remaining pieces of the collar before he does, but she was downcast that Rackham has the book, which was their only way of direction. Tad then told her that he had torn out the important parts of the book before handing it over. According to the book, the second piece of the collar was offered in the Temple of Araniti. The wife of Baal and her temple is in Cappadocia, Turkey. They hire a boat to take them on their journey. They sail to Cappadocia, Turkey to find the Temple of Araniti, the wife of Baal. During the journey, Tad tells Tiffany about his feelings for Sarah and shows her the necklace he plans to gift her. Tiffany asks to try the necklace on. On the other side of the boat, Sarah and the mummy are in a discussion, and she opens up about her. She has neglected her feelings and relationships with people she cares about because of her job. After she receives some advice, Sarah decides to tell Tad about her feelings for him, but doesn't do it because she sees Tad putting a necklace around Tiffany's neck. Arriving at their destination, they carry out their search secretly for the fear of being caught by Rackham's men. 
At Cappadocia, Tad notices the cold attitude Sarah gives him, and he's confused about it. They decide to split up to make their search easier. Sarah purposely avoids Tad and chooses Tiffany to be her partner, leaving Tad with the mummy. Tad tells his partner about Sarah's attitude and how he feels about it. The mummy tells Tad to always try to be the knight in shining armor for Sarah. He also pretends to be Sarah and asks Tad to confess his feelings to him, which Tad does reluctantly but beautifully. They move ahead on their search for Eridina's temple. They discover the temple but find out that some of Rackham's men are there. Fortunately, his men aren't sure if that is indeed Eridina's temple, so they leave. Tad instructs the mummy to stay in hiding while he goes down to the temple. Tad finds the temple of Eridini. He goes alone into the temple and discovers the second piece of the necklace. As soon as he picks it up, the temple experiences some kind of turbulence and a golden smoke fills everywhere. Scared, Tad takes to his heels and discovers that the smoke heads toward the direction of Apollo's temple. Excited, he goes to Sarah with the second piece and tells her of his latest finding. Sarah suggests that they break the piece because that is the only way Rackham can't obtain the power that he wants, but Tad and Tiffany disagree, which makes her upset. Alone, she set out to find the last piece. Due to Tiffany's overambitiousness, she betrays the team, steals the second piece of the necklace, and gives it to Rackham so he can find the last piece and give her the all credit so she would attain the level of fame she had always dreamt of. Tad, realizing that the second piece is gone, and in a perplexed state, regrets not listening to Sarah. He decides with the advice of the mummy to go after Sarah and help her. Sarah heads towards Apollo's temple amidst heavy snow. It is a very dangerous and stressful journey for her as she is with no one but her parrot. A few miles back, Tad and the mummy follow her trail, and they experience the same difficulty as she does. The mummy's bones begin to fall off due to how cold and harsh the weather is. After a stressful journey, Sarah arrives at the door of Apollo's temple where Rackham, Tiffany, and Rackham's men arrive with a helicopter. Sarah calls out to Tiffany in disbelief feeling betrayed. She is then overpowered by Rackham's men, and her parrot is put in a cage as they all head into the temple toward the last piece of meat as his collar. Tad later arrives at the temple with the mummy. He sees Sarah, and they run into each other's arms. Soon, he and the mummy are overpowered by Rackham's men. After walking for some time, they finally arrive at the statue of Apollo. Rackham instructs Tad to pick up the last meat as collar piece and bring it to him, which he slowly does. He picks up the collar and pretends to be possessed by the spirit of Midas. Soon, he stops because Rackham doesn't fall for it. Rackham commands him to wear the collar which he does, then, one after the other, the already collected pieces are assembled and arranged into the collar by two of Rackham's men. As soon as the pieces of the necklace are complete he puts it on and immediately transforms. He tests his power on the animal statues in Apollo's temple, and it turned it to gold. Rackham has received the power of the three pieces just like Midas did and everything he touched turned to gold. Tad requested that he releases them since he has finally gotten what he wanted. But Rackham refuses, he doesn't allow Tad and his friends to go free and attacks them with his newly found powers. They all try to defend themselves and hide behind rocks from him, but he's too strong for them. He charges directly at Sarah, but Tad saves her from him and faces him squarely. Tad tries to cut the collar from Rackham's neck, but it proves futile. Rackham shoots gold from his hands and feet, and the chances of survival of the people in the temple are slim. Finally, during the fight, Rackham is crushed by heavy rock, and everywhere becomes a bit peaceful. Tad runs towards Sarah to check on her, but unfortunately, Sarah is gradually turning into gold. As she was solidifying she attempts to confess her feelings to Tad, but she finds it difficult. Tad is very sad and perplexed as he watches her completely turn to gold. The temple begins to crumble, but he refuses to leave, he prefers to die with her. He puts the necklace he got for Sarah around her neck, confesses his love for her, and holds her in a long and sad embrace. After a few seconds, the gold melts off her body and Sarah gradually returns to life. This happened because Tad was ready to sacrifice himself for Sarah, the same sacrifice for love that brought Midas' daughter back to life. Everyone gets emotional because they are happy about the experience. Back in Chicago, Tad throws a party with his co-workers in attendance. They joke and ask to see Sarah clear their doubts about him knowing her. A few moments later, Sarah arrives and they are all surprised. Tad later asks Sarah to be his girlfriend, and the mummy reveals that he'll be returning home. There is music, laughter, and joy as everyone has fun. The end. If you love this video, please subscribe and leave a like for more.